Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Tuesday, October 15th, 2019. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Keep in mind that this reading is timeless. So whenever you watch it and it resonates for you, that is the message for you at that time. Yes. Okay, so yesterday was a really interesting day. Um, first of all, we had afternoon tea, which was fantastic. However, while I was in it, it just felt, the energies just felt a little lower than normal. Um, and then I went about the rest of my day and it, it just felt, it's like there's, there's this underlying sadness or um, melancholy um, and it most likely has a lot to do with you know the full moon energies and things that we're releasing and purging and blah 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 but um, it's very interesting so yeah there's this like underlying sorrow but then and yet there's still at least speaking from my point of view, uh, at least every, with, with everything that we've been going through lately and like me personally, me really, you know, spending a lot of time listening to Abraham Hicks and really putting that into practice and being conscious of my emotions and being conscious of, you know, how I feel and, and, you know, taking responsibility for that. I've found that there, it, there is a way to stay like right above this layer of sorrow that's like down here and then and then you can I mean we can stay like right above it but yet it's still that's it yes it's still pulling us down it's, it's like a heavy a heavy weight weighted energy and I was thinking about it this morning um, as I was going through you know my my um, my process you know doing my thing and blah 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 my 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 meditations and whatnot and um, And it's just, I totally lost my train of thought there. I, I, was, I, was, I was thinking about it this morning and it was interesting how, you know, how clearly there is this like, this like layer of sadness and, and whatnot. And yet it's interesting to be able to like, to like just stay right above it, right above it. It's strange. It's very strange. But so I hope you guys are doing okay. You know, you're having a, an okay time of it. Um, but then, interestingly enough, we do have pre-shuffle energies here, and the card that fell out is Justice. And immediately, I heard Libra. Now, Justice does stand for Libra, and it is Libra season. Oh, that's, there it is. That's what I wanted to talk about. So, oh shoot, there it goes again. It keeps slipping away from me. Um, okay, yes, there it is. Okay, so what the the thought process i was going through this morning led me down a path of remembering what the summer was like the, the summer at least for me or for many of us in the collective because often we all go through very similar things but over the summer speaking personally for me it was a ma major massive massive purging period um, but it wasn't a traditional purge. It wasn't like, you know, being down in the depths and crying and, and, and just like a complete mess. It was more of consciously removing myself from certain scenarios or consciously removing people, certain people, certain energies, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever, out of my life. Um, and it dealt with it, it dealt with the two major ways that it had been showing up. Um, one through energies of my ex-husband, the other through energies of um, the individual that really kind of helped really push me into this awakening. You could consider him, you know, could call him my twin flame. That's what I was calling him for a while. Um, I don't really know what to call it anymore, but that's okay. It, do it really doesn't matter. It's just a label anyway, but ultimately it helped me, it helped push me out of a really toxic energy. And push me out of the mind space of allowing these toxic energies into my life, right? And it was it was crazy the way it happened. It was literally one after another. It was, I dealt with an energy that was just like my ex-husband one 
month, literally once I once I cut nipped that in the bud and saw that for what it was. Two weeks later, I then saw what another situation was that was exactly the same as the situation that I was um, that I experienced with this person that I called my twin that we call my twin flame and all that. Um, it was it was really interesting. So now now that we're out of that summer purge and and it's funny because this past summer was supposed to be was considered to be the summer of love, right? Well, for me, it wasn't really the summer of love in which I met a partner and now I'm, you know, hap happily coupled up or anything like that. It, for me, I realized this morning it was a summer of love in loving myself enough to give myself the love, the care, the attention and the ability to do the things that I wanted to do and achieve the things I wanted to and to go after the things that I really want to go after instead of holding myself to some other standard that is not that does not resonate with me right so now we're in the fall period and we just had this full moon and the energy um that I'm feeling collectively is just this sinking feeling yes but also it's an energy of just the past and all the spirit's favorite word lately, all the superfluousness is just falling away. And so that's kind of where we are right now. We're in this dip. So everything's kind of slowing down. Things are quieting down. Emotions are a little bit heavy. <clears throat> I mean, think about it. It's it, at least here in the, in, the, in the United States, in the Northeast, it's fall. All the trees are losing their leaves. You know, things, animals are starting to get ready for hibernation. I mean, if we were still, if we were still, um, if we still lived in this way, we would be gathering food to collect for the winter months, right? So everything is kind of slowing down. And I really do feel like there is some sort of rebirth that is being ramped up or being prepared for, okay? Once we come out of this, you know, this fall winter season into 2020, I feel like there's going to be a big change, a, a, a ramp back up, okay? And it all, and, and it all the, 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 the nature of that kind of hinges on what we do now, right? So then that gets us into these pre-shuffle energies that, I've, that I'm picking up here. So, I, so the first card that came out is Justice. And yes, I heard Libra. We are in Libra season, but Libra is all about balancing, balancing the scales and that's what justice represents there is justice being served here and i really feel like this justice comes from being a little selfish okay you have the knight of cups here which can be looked at as a kind of a, a selfish energy but you see you have this knight that's moving in a certain direction and i'm getting that it's kind of like he's leaving the world I don't know, his associations, whatnot, whatever. He's leaving all of that behind him. And he's going in a direction that suits him, that serves him, that speaks to him, that calls to him, right? On the other side of this, we have the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands is this, is a symbol of um, uh, beauty, magnetism, uh, confidence, you know, social aptitude, um, I, I see the Queen of Wands as a as physical embodiment of like the law of attraction in the fact that she's just she's just so magnetic whatever she wants it, it needs it just it just gravitates right to her and I just I'm getting a feeling of bringing justice into your life by being very focused very consciously focused on what it is you desire, what it is you want to have, what it is you want to achieve, what it is you want to feel, what it is you want to experience. Now, really, I feel like going into the fall and winter, now is definitely that time. It's definitely that time to really focus on you. Now, if you're in like some sort of relationship or family or whatnot, obviously that has to be tempered a little bit, you know, um, but if you are not, I mean, if you're single and you're just out here doing your thing, um, there's no reason not to really focus on you and give yourself the love and the care that you know you deserve, that you want, um, and give yourself the things that you desire. Focus on you. Focus on being happy. Focus on feeling love. 
love for yourself, love for others for sure, but the love that the divine pours into us 24 seven, you know? That's really, that's really where I feel this justice is coming into play here. It's like we're finally coming into an energy or a position where we can love ourselves fully. We can look at the external world and all the expectations society may, may hold on you or whatnot, whatever. And you say, and just be like, you know what? I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to do that, period. Why? Because I said so because it doesn't make me happy, because it doesn't make me feel good. It stresses me out. It tires me out. I'm not doing it. And the unconditional, uh, the unconditional love of the universe says, go right ahead, honey. Do you. Because honestly, what makes whatever you, whatever you do that helps you feel better only puts you into greater alignment with us. So, of course, we're going to encourage you to do those things, to pursue that relationship, to pursue that career, to pursue whatever it is that makes you feel good inside, that makes you feel happy, that makes you feel connected to yourself and to, to the universe. That's what's keeping you connected to us, us being the universe, right? Uh, okay, got to... That, you know, honestly, that really is a good, a very, very good energy, you guys. Very good energy, okay? And yes, things do feel heavy right now. It's not going to stay this way forever. Um, we have the Three of Cups here. Gratitude. Gratitude is necessary right now in this moment in time. Especially for those of us that are really staying keeping keeping to ourselves staying in a solitary state and it's not like we're trying to you know shun the outside world it's just there is an energy of feeling like wanting to be in an extended um, um hermit mode a friend of mine she's on instagram as day of wonder tarot she's fantastic i i absolutely love her but she's a card reader also and she posted a reading you know a single card post on her instagram page yesterday it's day of wonder day of wonder it's all one word um but in that post it was the hermit and she mentioned how you know she mentioned this like extended hermit like season and i read that and i was like oh my god that is so perfect for what is happening right now okay and so as you're in this extended hermit season it's not just a moment it's a season and it's absolutely necessary for um but first let me say this um as you're in this extended hermit season gratitude is key please make sure that you're taking time to consciously be aware of the blessings that you receive every day no matter how small or large they they are and just be grateful be grateful for what you do have in your life in this moment yes obviously we're going to be creating more that is the point of being here to begin with okay but in terms of being in the present moment make sure make sure that if you are doing what you can to at least acknowledge that which, that which you have right now and how far you have come. Because think about it. You really have to have come very, very far to be in this conscious awareness of, this, of a shift like this. Do you know what I mean? To be in this conscious state of mind to experience a shift like this. And this shift is actually happening 100% consciously. You may just not realize it, okay? But anyway, um, there was something else that was coming through with this. Solitude, solitary, whatnot, whatever, okay. You also have the Knight of Pentacles and the Three of Wands. So everything's going well. You are on the right path, all right? I don't remember what, was com what else was coming through with that. Maybe I said it and didn't realize it, but oh well, that's okay. So now let's reset. And let's get into the rest of the reading here. Give it just one more shuffle. All right, guys. Let's do it.
Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Tuesday, October 15th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, we're giving this three shuffles. Tuesday, October 15th, 2019. One more. Okay. Let's see what we've got for today, kids. Tuesday, October 15th, 2019. For the collective police spirit. I'm gonna, I know some, ooh. Okay, we're gonna, I, some stuff has fallen out. I'm gonna go one more. Give this one more and then we'll see what we have for today. Tuesday, October 15th. 20, I'm seeing a lot of orange. And it's interesting because when I first started, um, wow, oh, these are good. These are good energies, you guys. Uh, okay, um, yes, yes, all right. So I'm seeing a lot of orange. And interestingly enough, um, there was a lot of orange in that Queen of Wands energy that came out before. Um, and we do have some pretty fiery energies here. We have the Eight of Wands, we have the Four of Wands, we have Strength, okay? Um, however, when I was seeing it this morning, I was seeing a combination of orange and yellow. Orange being the Sacral Chakra, yellow being the Solar Plexus. And it's almost as if emotion and will are starting to combine or starting to maybe level out for some of you. Um, it may be that... That actually made that now that I really think about it and really look at it and you know channel a little bit more about it for some of you, this is actively this is you taking action in terms of what your emotions are telling you, informing you of are are guiding you towards i, I you're list I literally just heard you're listening to your heart, you're listening to your emotions, you're allowing how you feel to dictate the actions that you take. So in other words, you are choosing to do things that make you feel good, that help you feel better. Or at least that's something that's some that's something that's sinking into your consciousness like it's saturating your consciousness so for some of you you are taking action in terms of that for others of you you are becoming aware of that you're allowing yourself yes there it is you're allowing yourself to start thinking along along those lines which spirit is saying is a symbol of evolution is what they said um but you could say also say a symbol of awakening or more importantly, a symbol of awareness. Being conscious of how we feel is pivotal in terms of manifestation, okay? It's a beautiful energy. So let's talk about this here. We have the seven of pentacles, which is in reverse. You have the four of wands, you have the page of pentacles and you have strength. So I wanna start here overall energy of the eight of wands and then what was the other one? Oh, the two of pentacles okay so we'll talk about that in a second right yes i want to start here so we have the page of pentacles with the seven of pentacles so the seven of pentacles is in reverse and if you can see i'll turn it upright so you can see but you see this this guy's look is not too happy okay his expression is not too happy on his face this is indicative of all of the time that we've spent cultivating circumstances, business opportunities, career paths, relationships, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever, cultivating all the things that ultimately did not make us happy, okay? The Seven of Pentacles, is, as a reader, 
in my opinion, represents or can represent learning, uh, learning from the contrast. I heard past experiences. Yes, that's true. But past experiences in terms of learning from the contrast or experiencing the contrast. Okay. Um, in terms of the, what Abraham, um, teaches the seven of pentacles can be a step one moment. No, 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 no. Seven of pentacles would be, it, it was, I guess you could say it's a combination of step one and step two, but it's more of a step two moment. Step one being experiencing the contrast. Step two, asking for something in re, in relation to the, the contrast that you've experienced, right? So I guess you could say it's it, the seven of pentacles would be a combination of step one and step two, right? But see here, this is reversed. So what this is saying to me is we're leaving the past behind. We're leaving all that stuff behind. We're leaving that reality behind. It's it's almost as if we're we're completely scrap scrape scrapping that product or that crop and we're creating a new one. Page of Pentacles. Okay. As a reader, in my opinion, the Page of Pentacles is a new start, is a level up, um, a new beginning. It's an, definitely an energy of coming into a new level and now, huh, I just heard facing the circumstances. That's interesting, but as, but okay, the Page of Pentacles is here, is speaking to this new level that we've come to. And I guess, yeah, at this stage right now, we're facing the circumstances. You, uh, mm, that's interesting. What does that mean, spirit? Facing the circumstances. I'm getting something about it, but it's, it's hard to put into words. Facing the circumstances. We might have to come back to that. I'm not quite understanding what that means. Like. What I'm feeling is like you're facing you're facing the circumstances of the past in relation to oh okay 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 so yes there is an energy of rejecting some sort of crop or something that we were going for in the past starting all over completely starting over over but you're facing the circumstances of the situation in the past so that you don't recreate them there you go that's good and that actually is an element of the seven of pentacles okay because the seven of pentacles you could say the seven of pentacles is like the <sighs> guys i'm sorry sidebar it is like 8 24 in the morning right now and this person is riding around on this like dinky little noisy ass bike or something it's the second time they've rolled past my apartment. It's freaking 8.30 in the morning. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I digress. Um, the Seven of Pentacles, you can see the Seven of Pentacles as like a checkpoint, um, as a moment in which you're saying to yourself, okay, I have this crop. Is this what I wanted? Or I have this harvest right now. Is this what I wanted? Yes, no. Yes, act accordingly. No, act accordingly. And so here, we're looking at the, what's behind us, Okay, in the rear, looking at what's in the rear view and saying, and kind of using that as like a reminder, like, ooh, ooh, I don't want to go back there, or oh, I don't want to create that again, or blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. Again, learning from the contrast, but keeping your future forward facing, okay, your future forward focus in terms of what's next. With that, we have the Four of Wands and we have strength. Okay. So you have a solid foundation here, quite a solid foundation here. And this is almost, uh, with strength, this is a good thing. Number one, this is saying to me that you are, that you have the strength or that you cultivated the strength to stay calm, stay cool, you know, tame the beast within, um, stay patient, okay? And then others, and then on, on another level, on a deeper level, we're still kind of cultivating this, you know? And it's, but it's good though, it's because the strength, if you guys remember, it kept, it was this side of the card for a long time, for a, at least a week or, or two, right? But now we have it here. We have it here with the four of wands. And this side of the four of wands is very happy. You know, the sun is shining. Everything's good. You know, two depictions of the sun shining here. All right. This is very good energy, you guys. 
a solid foundation, spiritually speaking, creatively speaking even. Okay, and then with the Eight of Wands, you have swift moving energy. I feel like I feel, the overall here, the, the, the air is fairly clear for movement. Okay. And then on the other side, you have the Two of Pentacles. But it's the side of the card in which, you know, you see this ship coming in. I feel like what this is saying here is we're maintaining a balance while the next cycle rolls in. While we prepare for the next cycle. Something like that. Okay. Even though things feel pretty heavy right now, this is still a very good energy, you guys. And I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like the heaviest of it is this Seven of Pentacles in reverse here. But the beauty of it being in reverse, you guys, is the fact that we are conscious. I really feel like we're consciously aware that we're not going back to any of that stuff. At whatever the Seven of Pentacles re represents for you, we're not going back to that. Future forward. We've reached a new level. So, so the heaviness that we're feeling here is the Seven of Pentacles. It's still a bit of the purging, the releasing. <clears throat> but ultimately, it's okay. Because we have this solid foundation here with the Four of Wands. And we really have done quite a bit to tame the ego, to tame the mind. We're still, we're still working on the ego a little bit. But it's much better than it used to be. I'll tell you that. It is much better than it used to be. The fact that we can even stand here in this Page of Pentacles, Seven of Pentacles energy, despite everything that we've been through with this Seven of Pentacles in the past, is a feat in and of itself, is evidence of serious growth, okay? That's beautiful, you guys. So yes, things feel a little heavy still. And to be quite honest, it's, it's, that's part of life, you know? It still, it still feels quite good, okay? Really quite good. All right, <clears throat> so let's get some greater clarity here. Okay, we're gonna start with strength and the Four of Wands. Strength in the Four of Wands. I just want to get a little bit clearer energy on this for us right now. Ooh. I'm going to give this one more shuffle. And then we're going to look at the Page of Pentacles and the Seven of Pentacles. All right. Oh. So, Four of Wands and Strength here. Let's define this energy a little bit more. What is this energy spirit? The hanged man and the star. Oh my god, I'm gonna leave it right there. I don't wanna pull anymore. <laughs> With the queen of wands again, you guys. I told you this is a. Oh wow. Oh wow. So check it out. This, <clears throat> this is gonna sound a little strange to some of you, but your change in perspective, this stagnancy, that maybe you've been experiencing maybe your whole life or maybe for just an extended period of time. For me personally, I, I've come to the realization that um, I've dealt with a good amount of stagnancy throughout my life because I needed to have, I needed to change the way that I observed things. I needed to change the way I view myself, I view the world, I view existence, I view reality, I view creation, I view success. Any, all of that stuff. So for me, this was basically my whole life up until now. I'm only 32, so that makes a, that makes a good amount of sense. But for many of you, this could be this your whole life too, or it could have just been an extended period of time. But it's this change in perspective that has helped you to create this balance or to create this spiritual or creative foundation. 
And it's this change in perspective that makes it easier to, t to, 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 to tame the beast within, to tame the ego, to tame the mind, to, to, to quiet the mind, right? And thus you have the star, which is healing, wish fulfillment. Now, the other thing that's, also, that's coming through here is you might be feeling like this. You might be feeling a little bit stuck. I know I am, um, but I, things do feel a little bit um, not stuck on pause. Betsy says that quite often. I love it. I love that. I love that Betsy says it that way. Betsy is a very dear friend of mine. She's also a reader. You guys probably know her. Fearless Intuition. Check her out if you don't know about her. I love her. That's my, that's my, that's my G, that's my girl. But she says it right, or she says it really well. The hanged man, it might feel like you're stuck, but in reality, you're just on pause. And that's what this energy feels like here. With the queen of, and, and so you're on pause to get yourself into this receptive mode, to get yourself into the mode that's going to bring you exactly what you desire, the star. Okay, this is necessary. And just, just looking at this energy right now, it feels so good. It feels so good. It feels free and exhilarating and, and, and exciting and full of all kinds of wonder. So don't worry. If you're feeling a bit of stagnation, don't worry. You're literally just on pause. Think about what I was saying in the beginning of the video, in the beginning of the reading, how, you know, we went through this really strong purging season over the summer. And now we're in the fall, going into winter. Like we're literally, at least here in the United States, I know those of you that are down in Australia, you guys are in, you're in spring right now going into summer. But for here, for us up in the Northeast, um, in the Northern Hemisphere, I'm in the United States, we're going into fall into the winter. So for us, this is like hibernation period. Like it's time, it's time to batten down the hatches, stockpile whatever you can and just hermit up, <laughs> you know, an extended hermit period. This is a period of healing, really, okay? Don't worry, you guys. Everything is very quite is really quite solid here, right? You have the strength to get through this, and and also the Queen of Wands is talking about confidence too. Okay, I love that the Queen of Wands came back out here. Of course, in this deck, it's the Mother, but that's where this is the Wild Unknown Tarot. Okay, so now let's look at this page of Pentacles, Seven of Pentacles here. I want to get a little bit of a, a deeper understanding of what. This is for us here, because this feels like the most, this feels like a bit of a challenge. This really feels like you're consciously looking in a different direction other than what's been in front of you for a while or this whole time. This feels like a conscious, conscious switch and change in focus. Like you're not, it, this really definitely with the seven of pentacles here, this feels like you're not mulling over the same thing over and over again. It's almost as if it's almost as if we've released this this insane element of doing something the same way over and over expecting to get a different result or going after the same thing in all these different ways only to for it to not work out. Like at one at some point you're going to have to say to yourself, "Okay, well maybe this just isn't supposed to work out the way I want it to," right? So with that said, it, I consciously feel like we are consciously looking in a new direction now, focusing on a brand new pentacle, a brand new seed. I mean, this literally feels like we're, we're starting a whole new crop, okay? So let's get, um, I do want to shuffle. I'm going to give this two shuffles and then I'm going to see what we've got for this energy. It's interesting. I don't know why I feel in, compelled to do that, but I... Feels right, so we're gonna do it. Okay, here we go. So, what is this? Page of Pentacles, Seven of Pentacles in reverse. Just some greater definition of this energy here for us. Wow! <laughs> oh my God! 
Oh my god, you guys. All right, look. Well, first of all, you have the Eight of Cups. All right, so just like I said, I'm gonna look at the bottom of the deck in just a second, but just like I said here, we are consciously, consciously walking away from all of this superfluousness. And the superfluousness is represented by the Seven of Pentacles. It's like at, what, at some point you're gonna have to say to yourself, okay, I've been trying and trying and trying to get this off the ground and it's just not working. Or this, this plant just doesn't want to grow. So fine. I'm going to go in a different direction. I love that. And see what you have here? The king to that queen. King of wands with the king of swords underneath that. And, oh yes, the emperor. Yo. <laughs> Yo. Damn, y'all. Yo, shit, I'm scared of you. Holy shit. Underneath the deck, overall energy. Whoa. The Five of Swords. What's under that? The Six of Cups. Okay, I get it. It's actually not a bad thing. You want to know why? Because we're walking away from this. Eight of Cups. And it, uh, it, to be quite honest, doing things over it. Uh, uh, um, hold on. Let me start that over. Because Spirit keeps saying, I swear to God, this is Spirit's favorite word lately. But Spirit keeps saying superfluous. So... We're going to, I looked it up before, I don't really quite remember, but we're going to look it up right now. A definition of superfluousness. Superfluous. Unnecessary, especially through being more than enough. We've had more than enough. That is the big message there. Okay? Stop beating a dead horse, basically, right? for lack of a better term, and I apologize for anybody that's offended or triggered by that, but it's a saying, so get over it. <laughs> but, but the element of going after all this superfluousness is self-sabotaging, five of swords. But you are choosing to walk away with that, <clears throat> not to walk, to walk away from that. Eight of cups. And I do say you are making a conscious decision to do so, and that's coming through well, with all three of these masculine energies, the kings of wands, swords, and the emperor. The king of swords is making the logical decision to say, okay, enough is enough. I've seen enough, all right? And it's perfect that it's coming out as the king of swords because the king of swords is like, in my opinion, as a reader, the king of swords is the judge, yes? He's the type of energy that will, that will, <laughs> that will try things or, or view things six ways till Sunday before he even tries to make a decision, right? Um, and with that said, in, in, in that element, you could see the King of Swords as an indecisive energy because if he's in unbalanced, he just keeps trying and trying. He's like, well, maybe there's a different way to see this. Well, maybe there's a different way to see this instead of just saying, okay, well, maybe this just is not going to work, right? But from a balanced point of view, you've come to the point where it's like, okay, I've seen enough. It's time to make my decision. Verdict is in, right? And so with the emperor and the king of wands energy, you are taking your power back and you are going forward with what it is you desire. Not looking back, not holding back, and damn sure not giving a damn what anybody else has to say about it. Now that is balance right there between the king and the queen of wands, right? Because the queen of wands has come out twice here. She was in the overall energy of the, um, the pre-shuffle and now she's come, and, now, and then she came out to help define this energy, four of wands and strength, 
okay? She was the overall energy. So you are in, you are embodying the magnetism of the Queen of Wands, right? The, the, the receptivity of the Queen of Wands. And you're taking action from, point, from the point of view of the King of Wands, which is helping to put you in that energy of receptivity of the Queen. Do you see how the two are working together here? That is really excellent, you guys. That is such a beautiful energy. Wow. Okay. So now with that said, let's get Spirit's take on this. Golden Universal Tarot and some advice. Some advice here. All right, so Spirit, what's your take on this? And what guidance do you have for us in terms of these energies that we're in right now? Page of Wands. Okay. Oh, there's that Five of Swords again. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. So overall energy of the Three of Swords here. All right. That makes sense. Hmm. So the first thing Spirit wants to say here, or Spirit is saying here, is your power, and you saw how that landed on my clear quartz here, right? The clear, clear quartz is like a... a an amplifier it amplifies your energy it, it, it strengthens your own natural just your own energy I use it as a channeling conduit to help strengthen you know my channels right your power here lies in using this period to the best of your ability to really discover deeper truth about who you are to really continue to discover yourself and even more so to discover what it is that drives you. What are you passionate about? What can you put your weight behind, right? What can you get behind, okay? Um, mm -hmm. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. You have the King of Wands again. So the King and the Queen of Wands have come out twice in this reading. You have the King of Pentacles and you have the Ten of Cups. Okay. This is about taking action. Striving forward. You have the Lovers with the Tower, the Five of Swords, and the Five of Wands. Um... Uh, bear with me for a second. There's big, massive change happening. It really is between the lovers and the tower here. I'm getting a little confused. Um, I'm having trouble tying all of this together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to get a little bit more. Please help me tie this together here. These two are related somehow. And what I'm, I'm going to tell you what I'm feeling already. What I'm picking up with the lovers, the tower of the five of swords and the five of wands is that there is deep integral change. And inter by integral change, I mean, I don't even know if this is the right phrase for it. I don't even know if that is a phrase, but what, um, Found the not well, okay. Foundational change, deep foundational change in terms of your own truth and your own authenticity. There's a lot of differing of opinion and there's a lot of sabotaging energy. I feel like there are energies out there that are trying to keep certain individuals from deviating from the path. 
And that could be that definitely I, what I'm feeling here is it's within the spiritual community. It, it, well, it's in all communities, but it, even in it's even found in the spiritual community because the lovers, in my opinion, as a reader, is a choice between vice or virtue. And here you're getting a choice between yourself, what your heart desires, and what society or dogma or whatnot, whatever, says you should do or says what should be right or is right for you. But you only you're really the only one that knows what's right for you. And I feel like you're choosing you, which is creating conflict. There's internal conflict. There's also external conflict in differing of opinion, but there's also five of swords energy in terms of sabotage. Um, people trying to sabotage you, people being jealous of you for taking your power back. And then you have the king of pentacles, the king of wands and the 10 of cups. I feel like you are, aha. Aha, this is you. King of Wands, King of Pentacles, Ten of Cups. And you see how this five, this guy on the, I don't know if you guys can see it, but this guy on the Five of Swords is staring right at this king. But these kings are staring right at their Ten of Cups. You're more focused on your Ten of Cups than you are on any sort of ties to anyone or anything. So specifically, let's, let's use the Twin Flame journey as an example. Because this is something that's been coming out, actually. It came out last week during the Instagram live reading, right before um, happy hour. But it's like you're choosing yourself over honoring some sort of connection or relationship, even though that connection or relationship is like not working out for you. Typically, we would be keeping ourselves in this obligatory energy of saying, well, I have this divine connection with someone, so I guess I have to stick with it. No. If it's not making you happy, if it's not serving your highest good, and it is, it's still serving your highest good in terms of it's getting you connected with your heart, with what it is that you wanna do. It's getting you into a position where you can, in fact, have the confidence, King of Wands, and the balance, the groundedness, King of Pentacles, to say, you know what? I choose myself. I choose my happiness. I'm going to go in the direction of my Ten of Cups. And if that doesn't include you, or if it doesn't include this spe specific individual, this counterpart that I have this connection with, then so be it. That's fine. As long as I'm happy, as long as I'm feeling fulfilled, who really cares? And to be quite honest, you guys, that's what I feel like the whole point of that type of situation is to begin with to become whole again and once you are whole you don't need anything external to you to be happy you don't need the validation to go after what it is you truly want ten of cups yes I want to pull a little bit more here you do have the three of swords at the bottom of the deck learning through experience um, I feel like this is someone, someone here. So whomever is taking their power back with this King of Swords, Emperor, King of Wands. The other person that the counterpart, I guess, that they're leaving behind is heartbroken by it. But I'm going to pull a little bit more from Spirit. Spirit just wants us to be aware of... The Five of Swords energy. I really don't feel... Yeah, that Three of Swords. I really don't feel like... Um, Ten of Swords. I don't feel like you're trying to start any drama. I feel like... The drama is with... The counterpart or... The energy that you're leaving behind. And leaving behind... I Take that with a grain of salt. Moving forward from... What is this Three of Swords, please, Spirit? Ow. Ten of Wands and Death. <laughs> all right, so all of a sudden, this really just became a counterpart situation. Spirit wants me to talk about this, so I'm going to talk about this. The heartbreak here, the reason why somebody is heartbroken here is because there was a lack of reciprocity when the situation was front and center. 
And now that someone has woken up, has chosen their heart and their happiness, and is making a change with the tower energy here, now someone is heartbroken. Now there's more conflict. Now there's jealousy. Now there's, well, no, I'm gonna stop. I, I want to stop you. Blah blah blah. And I don't feel like they're actually doing this, but this is their feeling. And it even it may even be a situation in which they are conscious of now how they are feeling about it, and that's helping them to evolve and to change. But we have the ten of wands here as an overall energy. That's some burden, y'all with death right underneath that, okay? There is a shift, there is a change that's happening. But you know what? Don't even concern yourself with it. Stay here. King of Wands, King of Pentacles, Ten of Cups. Stay here. Go after what it is you want. Live your life to the fullest, okay? Wow, all right. So now I'm going to close the reading with Oracle Guidance from the Crystal Mandala. Damn, this is almost an hour long. Holy shit. I didn't even realize I was talking. That literally, the time literally just slipped by, you guys. I. Wow. Okay. <laughs> One last shuffle here. All right. And let's see what we've got. Oracle Guidance for today. Card number 52. This is a card that we get pretty often. Um, Goddess Durga and Hematite, Spear of the Guru Mother. But this is perfect because this lines up directly with this Eight of Wands energy, okay? There we go. We bring you the empowerment of Spear of the Guru Mother. Sometimes there is so much choice that we struggle to commit. It is often not an issue of unwillingness to make an effort, but a concern that the choice might not be the, quote, right choice. We might pray to the universe to be shown what to do according to a wisdom greater than our own. Although our free will is always in, pray, in place, we are able to accept a task design, divinely given <clears throat> or reject it, the universe answers every prayer. In your heart, you have been asking for guidance to be shown what you need to do in a particular situation or perhaps more generally in your life at this time. You want to know the best way forward so your actions are in alignment with heaven. In response, you have now become the spear of the guru mother. And I just, I just feel like this card is, is saying that you have the guidance, you have the wherewithal, and you have the clear and open space to move forward, to go after what it is you are seeking. When the oracle of this, that's exact, this is it right here. When the oracle of the spear of the guru mother comes to you, you are being told your efforts have divine power behind them. The situations in your life are willing, I'm sorry, the situations in your life you are willing to grapple with are going to resolve far more quickly and potently than you might have believed possible. The power of your own efforts, amplified with divine will, creates extraordinary movement. Distraction, procrastination, and hesitation shall not touch you. Your focus will be complete and your task shall be attained. The trust you feel in yourself and the divine will increase because of this. You will gain more confidence in yourself. You'll be able to you, I'm sorry, you'll become game for bigger and bolder challenges. The universe will be able to ask more of you and give you more because you shall be increasingly open to it. The risk you take at this time with absolute intention will bring you so much more than resolution of the task at hand. I'm going to leave it right there. That's literally a perfect way to end this, you guys. So, with that said, I hope you have a great day. And if you made it through to the end here, thank you so much for, <laughs> for spending this almost hour with me. Um, I love you guys. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.